Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a Beast of Nurgle because the dice are taking forever to dry. Yeah. So we're going to be using a Beast of Nurgle this time and for this model we're also going to be doing an unboxing because I actually haven't opened yet or planned anything on it. And uh, there's actually a lot of variation lolloping slug bodied abomination that's true now some notes i'd like to make about this model is that there are three ish variations and that's very good for multiple versions i'm going to be making about three videos on this model alone over time and for this one we're going to be going with the main the bottom left image so first we're going to start clipping off everything and making sure everything's clean and ready After clipping, we then use a razor blade to remove the flash and to clean any mold lines. Now one thing I will say about this model is the pieces are very abstract. It's a little hard to figure out how they connect, so you're going to have to do a lot of dry fitting first before you actually go to glue. And now we have assembled the entire thing. This takes a while because the pieces are very strange. And then we prep it for priming. We're going to be using ultra bright gray car primer. And once, well while that is drying, we're then going to take Liquitex modeling putty and we're going to apply it all over the base. A thick layer, like, like three or four centimeters maybe at most in some places. And then we're going to rapidly dry it with a hair dryer. And once it's done, we're going to take a thick brush and we're just going to tap, tap, tap all over to stifle the ground, make it uneven. And once that's done, we're going to continue to dry with the air dryer for a little bit more. And then once we know that the top is solid, we will then press in the model once it's done drying from the priming into to make indents for it to seamlessly go into the ground. And with Pallid Witch Flesh and White Scar, we're going to begin undercoating. We're going to start off by using an airbrush and we're going to prime the entire model with Pallid Witch Flesh. Now after this is done, I decide to add a little more darkness into it. I take Ulthwan Grey and then I airbrush the undersides, like the bottom 50-45%, that kind of angle, to get all the shadows in. It makes it a little blue. And once that is done, I then go back to White Scar White and I dry brush all over the model. Uh, well, except for the tentacles on his head, with White Scar White to pick out all the details. And now with Plague Bearer's Flesh, the contrast paint, we're going to apply this all over the model except the tentacles and his tongue. And once that is dry, we will then go and apply a second coat on his, how do I put it, his top slug layer thing? I, I don't know how to describe it, but his top layer, his back slugness. And then once that is dry, we're then going to take white scar white again and we're going to lightly dry brush on his raised areas, his outer skin and stuff to lighten up the details and make them more pronounced. And now with Xandri Dust and Lamian Medium, we're going to use Lamian Medium to dilute it. So with a one-to-one -one mix of Xandri Dust and Lamian Medium, we're going to apply this all over his 
a belly underside uh, basically the parts that look really wrinkly or his underside that's touching the ground Now with Lamian Medium and Death World Forest, uh, one to one, we're going to mix a little bit of water in it to make sure it's diluted. We want to make sure this is see-through and transparent. We're going to apply this all over his back layer, the, slug, the top layer, the part that's not touching the ground, all over it. And this is going to add an olive green to him. Alright, all the details of the model are easy to see, but the colors seem to be a bit too diluted down. So we're going to add some depth. So we're going to take some Skeleton Horde Contrast. We're going to mix in uh, some water and Lamian Medium. Sort of a little bit of a one-to-one. -one. And then we're going to apply this all over the, the underside, the belly, the chest, the yellow parts. I like how the effect works on the belly, so then I decide to apply this all over the model except the tentacles and the tongue. And now with Xandry Dust and Death World Forest, we're just going to do dry brushing. With Xandry Dust, we're going to lightly dry brush onto the chest and the undersides, the yellow parts of the slug. And then with Death World Forest, we're going to paint the back, dark skinned part of him. And once that is done, we're going to take Gulliman Flesh, and we're going to apply this directly into every single cut he has. He has some big gashes in the front, but he also has a bunch of these small cuts and slices all over his arms and back. Some are big, some are small, so I swap between a very thin brush and a big brush for it. I also paint his organs as well. Now with this, I just have fun with it. There's no real rhyme or reason, and there's no real book on the internal organs of demons. So I just make it up as I go, and so I just paint them random colors here and there. And after that, I also paint his tongue this, because Goldman Flesh is a good base color. And then once all of that is done, I will then paint the tentacles on his head, Goldman Flesh, as a base color. Moving on with Cadian Flesh Tone and Magos Purple. With Cadian Flesh Tone, we are going to dry brush all the tentacles and his tongue. And once that is done, we're going to take Magos Purple and we're going to apply it all over his tongue and the tentacles on his head, as well as some of his organs. We will uh, apply them onto the white parts or apply them onto some of his organs there. I mean, for this, for his organs, just have fun with it. Just a bunch of colors.
And then once that has dried, one more layer of dry brushing on his tentacles with Cadian Flesh Tone. And now with Baylor Brown Skeleton Horde Contrast in Zamasi Desert, we're painting all of his horns, bones, and stuff. So we're going to start off with Baylor Brown, and we're going to apply it to the horns on his head, his nails on his paws, claws, as well as these, what is it, horns coming out of his spine. Yeah, and then once that is done, we will then go with Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it all over those. Oh, also, uh, his tongue has horns for some reason, so we're also painting those in the same way. And once Skeleton Horde Contrast has dried, we're then going to dry brush Baylor Brown on all of his bones and horns. And once that is done, we're going to then dry brush the messy desert on the tips of each of the horns and stuff. It's okay if you only get the very tips of his back spines, it's not a big deal. And then once that is done, we're then going to take pure Zamasi Desert with a brush and we're going to paint the tips of his horns on his head and like the very tips of the claws he has, just to add that extra like, bright touch. And now with Bestigore Flesh and Fugan Orange, we will now be painting all the boils and what kind of looks like boils on him. We start off with Bestigore Flesh, and we're going to apply this. There's a bunch of boils, like on his tentacles mostly, a few scattered around his body, some under his tentacles, giant ones, as best as I can figure. And once that is done, we then take Fugan Orange and apply it all over every single boil. And once that is done, we're going to take Bestigore Flesh and apply a dot of it onto each and every boil as a highlight.
And now with Pallid Witch Flesh, Contrast Magos Purple, Fugan Orange, Lamian Medium, and Mournfang Brown, we're going to paint the two sets of eyes he has, or I assume there are two sets of eyes. So with Pallid Witch Flesh, we're going to start off with the eyes on his side, and we're going to use this as the base coat for the eyes. And once that is dry, we're going to layer the eyes in pure Lamian Medium as like a liquid clear, and then we're going to tap, 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 Magos Purple into it. This creates sort of a... How do I put it? Like veins, sort of, or as close as it can be to veins. And once that is done, I apply some pure Magos Purple just to add a little more strength on some of the images, or pieces. And now onto his main eyes, which are base coated in Bestigor flesh. I then apply Lamian Medium all over his eyes, and then I tap, tap, tap the Fugan Orange into the eyes. This doesn't really work with it because it because the Magos Purple is a contrast paint and Fugan Orange is a wash and so they respond differently and the Fugan Orange just floods the entire recesses so it just creates like a red outline. And then once that's done I apply Mournfang Brown to the eyes. His and the ones on the side. I realize that the eyes on his side just ain't cutting it, so I take Bestigore Flesh and cover, like, create a pupil, a bigger pupil with Bestigore Flesh, and then I apply Mournfang Brown in the center uh, once it dries. Now turning my full attention to his organs, and with some very poor camera work, I apply Gloom and Flesh onto the flesh that's exposed as a good in-between, and just add, keep adding washes, inks onto the organs to make them look like whatever you like. Sorry about the bad camera. And then with the current version of Nurgle's Rot with some yellow ink mixed in, this is my version, I apply it to these open holes on his chest and stuff, which I realize is a waste because I'm going to varnish this afterwards, so this was actually a misplaced step. Alright, with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're then going to apply this all over the model. This is going to remove any excess shine anywhere, and it's going to create a dead flesh look. This, this, is, this is a very good uh, seal for paint because it makes him look really nurgly. And then once that's done, we're going to take super glue and apply it into the uh, indents onto the base, and then we're going to seal him in there. Now with Nurgle's Rot at the right time, we're going to apply this on the holes coming out of his chest, all over his tongue, these hole things that like they look like they shoot out Nurgle's Rot, and on the ground around him. And then once that's done, we're going to take Liquitex Gloss Varnish and we're going to apply this all over the organs, the exposed body, every single boil, uh, all the eyes, and places that you think should be wet. to point out that this is actually a very heavily detailed model. It's surprisingly detailed, and I compare it to this Forge World Great Unclean one. Spoiler alert, I'm going to be painting one of these in the future on the channel. And there's just so much detail packed in, not as much as the Forge World, but pretty close, like about maybe 70 to 80 percent of the detail that a Forge World model has. Really impressive stuff. And done, after basing it with your basing color of choice. Mine's always Mournfang Brown, unless I'm doing multiple squads. So, wow, this model was very simple. It was mostly just trying to figure out the colors and trying to replicate the box art. Now, the box art one is more brighter, a brighter yellow. It feels more vibrant. But, well, eh, I tried, but I did get him kind of yellowish. 
Now the mod was actually really good and I like all the variations. I will do more Beasts of Nurgle on the channel for the other variations and they will be painted differently. But the model, there's a lot of detail now. The reason I used dry brushing and washes heavily is because for something like this, something with so much detail packed into everywhere, the one of the easiest, importantly easiest, and best ways to bring out the detail so that it's visible is to use washes and dry brushing to pick out the details and flood the recesses. That way these things are uh, not a chore to paint because if I tried to do this with just a brush and try to paint every single scale or stuff like that, it'd just be ridiculous. I mean, after all, the channel's name, Joyful Painting. Painting should not be a chore. It should be, you should be having fun. It should be relaxing. You should be proud of your work, even if it's bad. You tried your best and you did good. And this model has a lot of detail, and I may be using a lot of washes and dry brushing, but it gets the job done and it does a good job at it. So as for this model, <sighs> it came out better than expected. Hmm. I'm, I want to say, I don't do 0.5s, but if I did, I would say a 7.8, but I'm going to say an 8. This, for me, feels like an 8 out of 10. It looks good, it's striking, you can see it, cl you can clearly see its features from across the table. When you look up close, it looks good, the details picked out, it flows well with the rest of my army, it looks nice. Alright, the dice are coming slowly very slowly but surely they will come when they come <laughs> with their stupid 24 hour drawing times every time i want to fix something i have to wait 24 hours minimum Ugh. all right like the video if you like the video subscribe for more leave a comment if you have anything to comment or nitpick uh share if you want to share it and uh more will come bye